All right, welcome back to the Sim Film Script Discussion, Season 3, Episode 6, Part 5, or 6. One of those numbers. Anyway, we're back. It's exciting. We are rolling right into Act 4. Act 3 basically wrote itself, I feel like. There was so much that had already been sent into motion. Yeah, Act 3 was everything that had to happen so yeah. that we could get to Act 4. So let's, let's, let's uh, do that. Yeah. So we will start off Act 4 with the attack of the Ents and mm -hmm. some Green Elves on the forge of Gamel What's-His-Face, the master of Pelkar. Yes. Who lives on, on a mountainside somewhere between the two dwarf cities of Nograd and Belagost. Yeah. So he's not so well protected at his little forge, and the Ent army <laughs> destroys it utterly. Yes. So Gamel, there are possibly some casualties, including him. Yes, Gamel guy returns to his forge under cover of darkness, because everything's under cover of darkness. Because there's no sun yet. There's no sun yet. <laughs> we kind of abandoned Ale a long time ago. Ale knows this place. Do we need Ale? We don't need Ale. Not in this episode. We can. I yeah. think. This Ale wasn't an episode that they him. wanted him to do something in, was it? At some point, he needs to buy uh, the mm -hmm. the woods from Thingol, but I don't think he's done that yet, and I don't think no. he needs to do it now. Okay. Gamal returns to his forge just in time for the ends to attack. And obliterated. Enough said. Camel guy dies. Horribly. Well, I mean, squashed by ants. <laughs> it could be quick. Being squashed by ants probably is an easier way to go than most. Violent it depends. Deaths. If like you live through the squishing, you're gonna die really slowly with all of your organs. Yeah, but you don't live through that kind of squishing. Anyway, if a tree falls on you, you die really fast. I'm not saying it's a. I'm not saying that's pleasant, but it's really fast. It depends on where it lands on you. Yeah, it's possibly true. You're right. If it takes out your leg, that's not so good. But I mean, or you like if it lands across your gut, you're paralyzed. All of your okay, stuff okay. is squished. <laughs> All right. So, so my cousin was killed by a tree, and it, oh, it snapped his neck instantly. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> sorry to hear that. That's terrible. I mean, well, not not recently. It was a few years ago. No, still, I feel like a yeah. jerk. Anyway. No, it's okay. It's my fault for being very uh, personally attached to trees falling on people in a certain particular way, because that's the one death I'm familiar with. Ow. Yeah, he was about 26. Oh, so on that note, let's kill this old dwarf. Yeah, okay. Whose name means old. Yeah, Gamble, Gamble find, face is a jerk. I think we need to find out the dwarvish word for guy. So it's because old guy? It be, yes, it would be hilarious if his name was old guy. <laughs> Well, guy is just kind of slang for person, right? Yeah. Dude. So it's like white. So yeah, like Kazad? No. That's, that's the Dorvish word for dwarf. Yeah, I know. Gemel yeah. Kazad. <laughs> we'll we'll figure something out. Um, okay. So the next scene should be <laughs> a response to that, I feel like. If it makes uh, you feel any better, I do know someone who's had a tree fall on his leg, and then his leg was like ruined for a year, and he had a very slow, painful, drawn out uh, death as well. He was elderly. Oh, mm. you're but, a so the point is, you weren't wrong. I was just, you know, focused in on. You're a bundle of killing. sunshine. I'm here to tell you. Come on, like you don't know people who have died. Not many. You have no acquaintances? I, I'm very fortunate. Oh, well, 
My like, grandparents have died of yeah. extreme old age. My uncle died of very poor diet and exercise habits. Bad health, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, so this this guy with the leg, his name was Mr. Green. He was like really old when I was eight. So my neighbor would go over to his house and clean the dressings on his leg and take care of him and stuff like that. So I knew he was bedridden. I didn't really know much about him. Gotcha. And he died. Like, because that's what happens when you're an old guy with a bad leg like that. Mm. No, I've been incredibly fortunate. I also possibly grew up in a farming community where these kinds of accidents are apparently yeah. more frequent than they are where you grew up. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in suburbia. I know. I was catching on to those. I'm like, this is one of like three farm related accidents I can rattle off off the top of my head that were all fatal. Like, mm. doesn't everybody have that? No, not so much. I mean, oh, we have okay. like, the, the thing is that I was relatively sheltered from the things that would kill you. That's like, probably and good. And knowing people that would be in those situations. Like, oh. you know, like, I don't know many gang members. <laughs> Or, Me neither. Me yeah. neither. Um, there weren't any major factory accidents <laughs> or anything like that. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, let's get back into Act Four. All right. Yes. So we killed off the dwarf. <laughs> yes. We killed off the end. Camel guy. Yes. Um, now it doesn't have to be Treebeard personally, but obviously he's done in by ends. Yes. Um. Maybe he gets in a, a few licks. He sets one of them on fire. That's why he has to die. Because he's got to be a feisty old guy, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's 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 a crotchety old dwarf. Yeah. And he's, okay. a, he's a weaponsmith. He's got weapons right there. Yeah. So he's going to grab something. And fire. Yeah, and a forge. So, yeah, he's got fire and weapons at to hand. So he's going <laughs> to use them. Right. The point is that it's hard to kill an, an end. So it's yes. not a thing. Yeah. All right. I feel like we have to kind of deal with the aftermath of this right away. Yes. And um, just sit on that. Um, oh, that could be why the Ents aren't there anymore. If Thingle sends them away, like, you guys can't camp out on this mountain next to dwarves. Clearly, it doesn't end yeah. well. Yeah. Maybe you guys should find someplace nice not here. <laughs> you guys are awesome and all that, but. Maybe this isn't the best place for you to be. So, okay. I feel like this is like a really good they did what kind of moment. Mm -hmm. um, like Thing Thingle wasn't expecting this. Yeah. So Mablung you think maybe Nern came out with Thingle? Why not? It makes sense. Well, yeah, because I mean, he would have been. Especially since Gamma left before the conference, so that would give us a dwarven voice there. Yeah. Okay. Because Nern sympathizes with the like, regardless of his feelings about the elves, he sympathizes with with the dwarves of Nagrod here. They're clearly in the right. You know, yeah. the elves should stand by their original bargain. Mm -hmm. They need the wood, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so Mablung, Nern, Thingol. Some really angry dwarfs from Nogrod. Some really angry Nogrod dwarfs and Denethor mm -hmm. have to be in a room where Thingol has just received news of the attack on the forge. Yeah. And is livid. He is absolutely incensed. Mm -hmm. um, learn to be attacked. Thor has to give a reasonable answer to this. 
Because whether or not Denethor thinks that violence was like killing a bunch of dwarves was the right thing to do in this situation, like a surprise attack. Well, I guess he was fine with his guys shooting that one dwarf. So I guess he doesn't. He's clearly not that bothered by it. But regardless, he like he understands why the Ents did this. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you know, and he expresses this to Thingol in ways that Thingol will understand. Okay. The question, like, and he could say something about, you know, if it was one of your children, how would you feel about it? Yeah, you know? we know how Thingol feels about his child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The dwarves still don't get it. Right. So the dwarves are having their own private conversation. Like, these people are nuts. These newcomers are trouble. Right. It sounds like the best way to handle the situation is to appease them, tell them whatever they want to hear, and then go do what we got to do. Yeah. Well, we can we can do that. We can do, like, while mm-hmm. Thingol and yes. Denethor are having that conversation... Nern can be talking to the the head of the Lowers, like, look, yeah. look, this is not like. Do, do you really have to cut down trees here? This is the only place you can cut down trees. You're right. And like, it's like, well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> right. So that's when he would point out the elves only have jurisdiction on the west side of the mountains. Why don't you go cut down the trees on the east side? They don't know. They don't care. They won't stop you. No more dwarves will die. Yeah. You know, make the wise choice here. Yeah. And so, and he's, and so the, the other dwarves are like, but the, yeah, how does that, be, how does that benefit us? And like, they're basically like, I, I, well, I think he, he'll, he'll say something to the effect of, I'll, I'll handle that. Because they're just going to, Nern's going to turn and he's going to negotiate. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Because uh, otherwise we don't know that the dwarves are cutting down trees on the east side of the mountains. Right. Like We're not going to see it. So we kind of need to give that away in the private dwarvish consult here. Yes. And Nern's not being like super, like he's not being super honest with Thingol. But he's also kind of like he doesn't. He's also not telling them where to go. Right. So he's just saying, don't do he's it got, here. He's got plausible deniability. Yeah. He he doesn't know what they're up to. Right. right. Yeah. And so, he he's coming up with a practical solution where nobody else dies. Right. Because Nern's a decent guy. At the end of the day, he's right. someone who doesn't want bloodshed over stupid disagreements. Right. Now he doesn't. That doesn't necessarily mean that he, you can trust him one hundred percent of the time. Every word he says coming out of his mouth, right? Right. He's a politician. We, like he's a he's a maneuverer. He's a he's a he's a mm-hmm. deal maker, right? Which is what we learn in this scene, right? In case anyone hadn't caught on to that already, yes. Right. <clears throat> uh, so it, it asks if <laughs> they. Absolutely must cut down these trees. They should actually start telling him, well, we could go to, he's like, no, 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 but you cannot cut down trees here, okay? Right. Anywhere the elves can see, don't do it. What about where the elves can't see? I'm not worried about those trees. <laughs> so he turns to Thingol and says, I've spoken t- with my kinsmen. They've agreed not to cut down the trees within your lands. Not to cut down these trees. He should right. just say these. Not to yeah. cut down these trees. Right. 
in exchange mm -hmm. in, in order to in order to make up for the loss of productivity mm -hmm. they need a certain amount of food delivered to them can your people provide that to us mm -hmm. and they will look to Dennis or like you got me into this <laughs> Yeah, guess who's cooking for these guys? Yeah. You all. Well, well, actually, you you and he can say he, he can say I'm sure that Denethor and his people would be happy to accommodate you. Like he doesn't have to consult with Denethor at all, and Denethor's just like, sure, why not? Right. <laughs> right. So no one's really happy with this deal. Like everyone feels like it was stupid and they got the short end of the deal, but at the end of the day, no one's killing each other. So Thingle feels like he did his job. But this isn't like the meeting with the dwarves for the first time where it felt like we've established like the new moving forward, peace between our peoples, cultural exchange. Like it wasn't like that at all. This is strictly practical. No one's happy. And there's a lot of political maneuvering going on. There is, and it's all they've managed to do is not kill each other. That's not exactly a strong alliance. Right. And Thingle has got to know He's got to know that they're clearly going to be getting wood from somewhere else. Right, because they established earlier they need wood. Right. He's not an idiot. But at the end of the day... I mean, they've got to be cutting down care. wood in Doriath. He knows that. Right. Like, he doesn't care, necessarily. He He's doesn't like, care he as long as they keep it to a dull roar. Right? Like, he doesn't... Right. It, it doesn't bother. Also, it does, as long as they're doing it outside his kingdom, he could, really couldn't care less about right. the, what trees they cut down out there. Right. Within his borders, he does care to a degree. But that's within the managed, like, cut down the trees I want you to cut down. Right. Don't clear cut anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we've solved this problem. Mm-hmm. Ish. Uh, Ents think agree. Oh no, the Ents aren't there. Right, the Ents. The Green are... Elves. Denethor agrees yeah. to get the Ents to stand down. Right. And maybe he can. Thingol can say to Denethor, and maybe they find, like, maybe this isn't the safest place for them. Right. Like he can say something that gently hints that maybe they're not super welcome. Right. <laughs> and yeah. and make some comment about I hear you guys came here to explore. There's plenty of other land to explore. Mm -hmm. Like get on out there and do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um then we can get old dog. And throwing with them. Bulldog complaining about not enough elves to murder. <laughs> Hate it when that happens. <laughs> I know. Um, and she can, what does she say? She's like, it's kind of like, yeah, I know we've been having that problem. We're working on it. Um, I mean, that seems like it's too, that's a yeah. little too. She could mention that Silvillo's report revealed nothing, that the, the elves seem to have vanished. Uh -huh. And that he should probably keep his army on the move. Mm hmm and eventually, you know, send scouts out, find where the elves have gone. She can, she can, like, we can set her up to start looking south, which might be why he finds Denethor's people first. Oh, so that, that she goes off by? Right, yeah. Right. Because we don't really okay. need her. Yeah, for a while. So, yeah, yeah so he could, he could express frustration. She can say, yep, so really didn't find anything either. And he's like, well, now what do I do? And she's like... There's Keep me. moving. I'll look. <laughs> yeah, like I can find things that the rest of y'all can't, because apparently you suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To uh, 
Fine. Follow up on the Fine. I guess I have to do it. Right. The the idea of reporting failure to bad guys. It doesn't go well. Right. And we um, should we should get a little attitude from Thoring Wethel. She she keeps a lot of things to herself, but when she does open her mouth, there should be some some attitude there. Right. And she, she probably thinks she's awesome. She can threaten like not she isn't directly threatening from her, but she can like like hold the power of of Bulldog's boss over his head. Yeah. Because it's know? obvious to everyone that she has Sauron's ear. Right. So Sauron's she knows that. Little. And you know, would use it. Right, so she threatens him, keeps him marching southward. And promises to fly south. Keeping elves. Okay. Boom. Now we get um, and say goodbye to the Reno's. Mm -hmm. It's a sad goodbye. Because they still do like each other. Like, they, they still... Yeah, and Treebeard's like, oh, we're going to come see you again. Like, we're just going to go on a little journey here, look around a bit. We'll be right back to Assyrian real soon. <laughs> just not soon enough. Yes, and that's the trick. Um, okay, well... So after that, now we're kind of like bleeding into the tag a little bit here. Uh, the yeah, the tag. But uh, Thingol returns, extends invitation to Kieran. We get camera shots of both uh, Melian and Luthien should both be there. Mm -hmm. Luthien can actually think that's a great idea. Like, she doesn't right, have to like, be super oh, smart all the time. You know, like, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But, well, and then the idea is, like, she's excited that she'll get to see more of Kirden and his people. Right. Like, yeah, you guys should totally come here and live with us. That would be so much fun. <laughs> like, she, you're right. She doesn't have to be super mature about this. Right. Um, <laughs> Melian doesn't say a word. No. Because, A, she knew this was coming. And she already said her piece. Right. Says nothing. Because the decision in the end is Kierden. She said what she needed to say to Kierden. If he doesn't agree with her, that's on him. Like, right. Melian doesn't tell people what to do very right. often. Right. Kierden thanks Thingle, but declines and will return to the Hanks. Okay. Um, yeah, this there's definitely a sad note at the end of this. So while like Thingol is happy with the kind of happy with the end result, mm -hmm. he got done what he needed to got done get done, and he's still hopeful for the future. But it's it's sad. There's some sad stuff that goes on here. Which is good. We don't want it to be an unmitigatedly right. hopeful ending. It's right. just going to get torn down later. We want there to be indications that this is not going so great. Okay. So uh, we dip back into the frame. We get our scene where it's decided that they will have a great hunt um, to look for to look for the um, to look for the wolves. Mm -hmm. Because soon the wolves will be coming. Right. And Just as they will be in the next episode. Yep. Yeah, I do feel like we we did stuff some of the stuff from the next episode into this one. 
with the whole missing elves thing. Like, I think we kind of moved that up a little earlier than it that's needed not, to be. Yeah, but that's, that's not a big deal, I don't think. I it's think not, can, and because the elves will still be missing. And yeah. as soon as you build Menegroth, you have missing elves, so it kind of yeah. all fits. Yeah, so, and just... And Tavildo, like we we can sl we can take our time with the Tavildo yeah. searching for Metagrod thing, right? You know, he doesn't have to he doesn't have to get it get the location out of anybody until much later, right? So he can spend his time torturing elves next episode. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I'm just pointing out that I think we did ramp it up a little bit so we will have to so. drag it out later. But it's, there, it's there, there's only so much you can do. Like you have to like some things have to be happening. Agreed. And I think we're fine. I think everything fits yeah. in this episode. I just was pointing out that yeah we'll have to rethink some other things later. Yeah. I do think that um that having Thuring with El with El, uh, visiting Bulldog does link that up with the other with the Tavildo Sauron scene. Um, mm -hmm. the Gothmog Morgoth scene is a little bit out of place. But it's supposed to be. But yeah, and that's fine. Um and but it's not super out of place because they just we're just talking about the common enemy and you know right. and it's that's fine. The, yeah. Okay. And it's it's about the middle of the episode is where we have that happen, roughly. It's like in Act three. It's it's like early act three though. It's mid mid act three. It's like right after Thingle's meeting with the okay. dwarves. Yeah. Okay. But near enough to the middle of the episode that it kind of feel like it connects the beginning and ending with the frame with that yeah. piece in the middle. Like it, that can tie together. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste these notes, which are kind of silly in some places, but I'm gonna paste them into the into the forums. Uh, All right. That's a good starting point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anything else that you can think of that we may have forgotten? No, I feel we're fine. the The thing we've forgotten is that this is supposed to be the Silmarillion, and we've kind of turned it into like petty politics. But that's not our fault. That, that was, no, that was there. There was going to be stuff like that. There's going to be stuff like that all through season four. Oh, season four is going to be heavy with it. It's just that yeah, and season um, whether five or not people have stuff like that. If I have my way too, so like there's going to be. Yeah. political maneuvering throughout there will be and we have some action scenes in here we have the destruction of a town of a village of elves mm -hmm. and we have destruction of the forge so like we're, we're not just having people standing around talking about how they disagree with each other we have people fighting interestingly but, enough they are those two things are almost bookended yeah i know <laughs> all right um so yes yeah, so I, I think we're good on the structure of the episode whether or not it feels like it belongs with the rest of the project is up to everybody else to make fit well i mean i don't think there's any there's i don't think there's any way around having episodes like this where we're just working out no how I, these two people wind up working together or separately yeah i guess what i feel like is that there might be some disappointment that there's not time like living in the woods with the green elves doing green elfy things <sighs> Uh, not, I'm just saying, like, it feels like if you have a group of these elves, you should have a scene of them just being themselves somewhere, not in a conflict with dwarves or we can do that. Credits. We can do that in the Mavlon Denosaur scene. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll put yeah. a note in there specifically calling that out. Um, yeah, just that there should be a little bit of that just to give a flavor for who these people are and, you know, some of their slightly more egalitarian yeah it's it's gonna look it's, woodsy right it's gonna look lifestyle. really great it's gonna look kind of like um i don't know i can't think of like like any time like like dances with wolves when when uh when kevin costner first goes to the to the sioux village you know and it's like and there's all the that nice music playing in the background, that idyllic music. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. With a lot of a lot of Rousseau stuff, you know, a lot of noble savage stuff. Yeah, that should fit with Green Elves. Yeah. And the point is that these aren't that different than the Sindar. At least they weren't no. a little bit ago. So right. how they feel yeah, this is this is essentially their root like this is exactly who they were ten minutes ago, essentially. 
Right. Or like like three hours of television ago, this is exactly who they were. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I meant. I didn't want to go overboard with that, but I wanted to sh just get glimpses of how their society is different. But no, I, I like the Kierden scenes. I think that that kind of anchors us in the Menegroth side of the story. And I like the parallels that we've got going throughout. Um, I don't like politics, but I've never liked politics. So that's nothing new. I kind of like politics, so that <laughs> Fair, but I don't. But uh, so I'm never going to like a story whose main plot is about politics. Um, right. yeah. I, I do like cultural culturally different groups trying to figure out how to get along with each other. So I like the diplomacy. I just yeah. don't like politics. Yeah, yeah. Um, I understand. But yeah, that's just personal preference. So yeah, I, th I think we're good. I think we got it. Right. In um, that case, anybody's watching live, thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, see you guys probably next week, it looks like. Um, if you're watching us in the future on YouTube, definitely like and share the videos if you like and want to share them. If you haven't yet, definitely subscribe. Check out the links below so you can get all that information from on the Silm Film Project, Signum University, uh, and MythGuard, plus MythMoot 4, comment in 5, it's 5, MythMoot 5, 4 nonsense, MythMoot 5, coming up June 21st to the 24th. It's going to be awesome. We'll see you guys there, hopefully. Bye. Goodbye.